Hi, in this video we will talk about energy balance and look at the ways in which we can measure and calculate energy in and energy out. And then we'll work through several calculations you should know how to do for the assignments and on the exam. Energy balance is when energy consumed from food equals energy expended, or simply as shown on the screen, energy in is balanced with energy out. A positive energy balance is when we consume more than we expend, tipping the scales to the left. This would result in a storage of that excess energy as glycogen and fat. On the other hand, if we have a negative energy balance, we're expending more energy than we consume, tipping the scales to the right, and this would result in the use of that stored energy. And so we would be using our glycogen, burning our fat, and even our muscles if that is a large enough deficit and result in overall weight loss. For both calories consumed and calories burned, there are ways in which we can measure or calculate energy. Starting with energy in, we can measure the energy of food using a device known as a bomb calorimeter, shown in this picture in the lower left. So this device measures the heat released when food is burned and releases its full potential of energy. And while this device is very precise, the human body is not quite as efficient. And so the physiological fuel values are going to be lower than when you use this device to measure the food. So the physiological fuel values we're already familiar with account for these inefficiencies. And they are that carbohydrates are 4 kcals per gram. Protein is also 4 kcals per gram. Fats are 9, and alcohol is 7. So you'll need to memorize these values, and this is what we can use to calculate the total kcals in a food, and we'll walk through some of those examples in just a little bit. Um, for energy out, we can either measure or calculate, and to measure there are two methods, either direct or indirect calorimetry. So direct calorimetry measures the heat given off from the body, and indirect calorimetry measures the oxygen um, consumed and the carbon dioxide expired. To calculate, there are several methods. Um, the one that you will be responsible for is called the factorial method, and that calculates total energy expenditure, and we're going to walk through some examples of that in just a minute. But let's start with calculating energy in. So this is a food label of macaroni and cheese, and we'll walk through, if we were given the grams of each of these, the fat, carbohydrate, and protein, um, we can use those numbers, multiply them by our physiological fuel values, and find out the total kcals in a given serving. So let's start with fat. We know that it has 12 grams here. We're going to multiply that by our 9 kcals per gram, cross out the grams, and we see that there's a total of 108 kcals from fat. Four carbohydrates, 31 times that four kcals per gram, and that is going to give us 124 kcals from carbohydrates. Same thing with protein. 5 grams times 4, and that will give us 20 kcals. All right, so now all we have to do is just add that up, and we see that the total in the serving size is 252 kcals. So that's pretty simple. All you have to do is memorize those physiological fuel values, and you'll be able to do the problem. Next, a little bit more complicated, is calculating that total energy expenditure, that's TEE. And this method is called the factorial method, and this is the one that we're going to use. You'll see that this is made up of REE times PAL. So that's resting energy expenditure, and I'll write that out here. And sometimes you'll see it labeled as BMR. We're going to use those interchangeably in this class. That's the, BMR means basal metabolic rate but we're more often going to call it resting energy expenditure. And then that's going to be multiplied by PAL, which is physical activity level. So, 
All right, so REE is pretty easy to remember, especially for males. It's just going to be equal to 1 kcal per kilogram of body weight per hour. So you would just multiply it by 24 to get the total for a day. But for females, since they burn slightly less, their REE is slightly lower on average. We're going to multiply it by 0.9 and then times it by the 24. Physical activity level is a number that could range from 1.1 for a highly sedentary person all the way up to 2.0 or even higher for a highly active person. An average number you might come across is about a 1.4, but a good PAL for somebody who is needing that activity level to lower the risk for cardiovascular disease would be about 1.6 to 1.9. Um, so we're going to look at Susan here. Susan is a 5 foot 8 female weighing 135 pounds and she's on the track team. So her PAL is actually 2.5. You'll see that the PAL is going to be given to you in a problem. So I'll break this down into four steps. Step one, we see that we're given the weight in pounds. So we're going to have to convert that. So we'll start with 135 pounds. We know that we can multiply that times one kilogram per every 2.2 pounds. Cross out the pounds. And we're going to get a total of, let's see here, 61.4 kilograms. So now we have to adjust for females. Remember, this is for females only. We're going to take that 61.4 kilograms. And this is to determine the REE times it by that 0.9 kcals per kilogram of body weight and that will give us 55.2 and that's kcals per hour so we'll multiply that by 24 hours I'm just going to put it back down here And that is going to give us a total of 1,325.5 kcals. So that is her basal energy needs. So the last step then is going to be taking that number and timesing it by her physical activity level. 1,325. 0.5 kcals times 2.5 and then we'll see that her total energy expenditure is going to be 3,314 you can round that last number to the whole digit kcals per day So this is a few more steps, but it's really all pretty simple math. Um, just remember for females, you times it by the 0.9, and for males, you would just times it by the 24 hours to get the REE per day. And then you're going to multiply it by that PAL, which will be given. Okay, last step, to put all this together, we want to consider the effects when we are not in energy balance. So problem number one, this is something you may have thought of before, or somebody has come to you and asked. But we're going to try and help Max out. Max here is interested in losing two pounds of body fat each week. So we want to let him know how much calories per day he should be in deficit in order to achieve this. So to start out, the important thing we need to remember is that one pound is equal to 3,500 kcals. So in this case, he wants to lose two pounds. So first step is just multiplying that by two. So two pounds is going to be equal to 7,000. And then this is how much he wants to lose per week. So the question asks us per day, all we got to do now is divide by seven. When we decide by seven, we see that the total is 1,000 kcals per day is the total amount that he needs to be in deficit. He needs to burn more than he is consuming by a thousand calories each day in order to lose two pounds per week. All right, question number two, on the other hand, 
is when we are consuming more and in a positive energy balance, how much weight are we going to gain? So we see that Alex here eats one slice of pizza and two beers, and we're given that that is a total of 485 kcals, and he does this four nights a week. So if this is an excess of his daily expenditure, how much is he going to gain from this habit in two weeks? So to start with, we're going to take this 485 and multiply it by 4, since we're told that he does this four times a week in excess. And this is going to give us 1,940 kcals per week. Now all we need to do is multiply that by 2, 3,800 and 80 kcals, and then let me just scroll down here. Give this a little more room. Okay, so if we have this total in two weeks of excess calories of 3,880, what you are going to want to do now is multiply that times one over 3,000, so one pound over 3,500 kcals. And we see that essentially this is equal to 1.1 pounds. So if this is kcals, you'll see that that was crossed out, leaving you with the pounds of weight that is gained in a two week period from this habit. Okay, so there's a lot more practice activities in the course content. I suggest that you click on those so you can practice more of these equations. Um, it's really pretty simple math, but I hope that this video helped you out. And I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.